Hello dear corporate executives, leaders, MBAs, entrepreneurs, promoters, managers. AI agents are the flavor of the month, flavor of the year in fact. All through the year 2025, every enterprise boss was considering launching AI agents in her or his enterprise. And the same momentum has continued well into 2026. So what exactly are AI agents? And why are enterprises so enamored with these AI agents? We will take a very simple look at this very crucial concept. Welcome to Billion Hopes. I am Sandeep Manudhane, Mentor Sandy, bringing you AI for Real Impact. Let's begin our session. AI agents in enterprises is an area of almost immediate interest for all CXOs. Everybody has tried these. Some of them have succeeded really very well. Some of them have moderately done well and some of them have failed. Irrespective of what the outcome of the pilot projects could have been, most of them are continuing with it because there surely are low-hanging fruits in AI agents. So let's get started and find what exactly are these agents from an enterprise perspective and what are the low-hanging fruits that you can actually deploy in just a week. Before we move ahead, my channel Billion Hopes has beautiful membership sessions, membership exclusive videos. Click on the join button on the channel and check out the three tiers and do go ahead and join. Thank you so much. What AI agents do? As all of us know by now, AI agents automate tasks that humans do. Now humans end up doing very many kind of things. We are a very complex machine, but we also do many simple tasks every day. It is these simple tasks or combination of these simple tasks that AI agents can easily pick. And if those tasks are repetitive in nature, day in and day out and day in and day out from an enterprise perspective in a department or across departments, then AI agents can actually do very well there. A lot of this earlier used to be called intelligent automation. Now we call it AI-enabled intelligent automation. So more or less things remain the same, but the superposition of an LLM on top of intelligent automation, IA, has brought in a new flavor to the whole thing. So what do AI agents actually do in an enterprise? Well, they can perceive the world around them. They can process the inputs they get from the perception and then they can decide. And then they can act. This is what makes them different from an LLM. And they can also learn and adapt if the right kind of design has been created. This act part is what makes agents different from theoretical AI. They actually take action. Now, what kind of actions can they take? Any. It's up to you. You have to decide what actions you want them to take. So naturally, the world still hasn't reached a stage where we would want our AI agents in enterprises to take very complicated series of actions because the errors tend to get compounded very fast and it could be catastrophic. And it has been catastrophic in many applications, although a lot of that could be traced back to human error of design. So this is what AI agents do. Now, I said right at the beginning of this session that there are many low-hanging fruits which company entre entrepreneurs and managers and company promoters and CXOs very greedily eye. And they should because it actually helps optimize on the cost. Before we move even one step further, let me make it very clear that the goal of AI in any company cannot be staff retrenchment. That is the most defeatist way of looking at AI. AI should be for maximizing productivity maximizing profits, but not retrenching human beings. It has never worked. Companies have discovered that much to their peril. So what are the low-hanging fruits? Well, I found at least 10. And by low-hanging fruits, I mean agents that you can deploy in just seven days from now. 
with the right kind of a consultant, right kind of a mentor, right kind of an AI vendor, you can actually deploy some of these within a week. And I'm assuming that your company, your enterprise, your business will have some structured process or at least the ability to structure the process. Remember, AI agents do not depend on the size of the company. The same agent can work for a giant multinational corporation and for a small family-owned business. It doesn't matter because processes are processes. AI agents focus on processes, right? So we are not bothered about the size of the firm here. Although it must be said that the bigger is the firm, the more is the potential benefit you can extract from an agent. Absolutely. So the 10 low-hanging fruits that you see are actually things that companies have tried and largely succeeded across the world, be it a developed Western world or the developing world. These agents actually work. In my consulting, I help companies try capture these low-hanging fruits on priority because that actually makes a lot of sense. Early wins can build a lot of confidence. I hope you agree with me on that. So, shall we dive into these? Well, the very first one, as you can see, customer service chatbots. At least for all the regular inquiries, all the regular queries, these chatbots have been found to be very good solutions. And they provide 24 by 7 automated support. And for 90% of the regular queries, they can actually do a very good job. And if you design them well, they can keep learning from the edge cases and keep improvising. And that's where AI, the LLM brain, comes into picture. All the FAQ resolution and issue routing can be done with customer service chatbots. Now, even if you haven't tried implementing one, you have definitely experienced one. Practically all the companies now have chatbots addressing fundamental queries. The smarter companies, they immediately give a human option right at the beginning. And many people then choose not to go the human way and use the bots. So it's in fact a good management practice to write in the very first initiation, also give a human option. You will be surprised to find that not everyone chooses it. So this is for those who fear giving a human option because they fear that everyone will lap onto that and their costs will rise or costs will not go down. That's not how every human behaves. Data entry automation. Companies are ingesting massive amounts of data today and most of them end up in data warehouses or data lakes on a real-time basis. There are various kinds of agents, in fact, literally tens of them, hundreds of them, that can do a lot of data extraction from the raw data point that come in. Lot of data validation before they are fed into the right data sets here and there because the company needs different formats. And inputting data from forms and emails. Every company has 10, 20, 30 different forms and 20, 30 different emails that actually get information from outside. Most of it is completely unstructured. The form data would be structured, but everything else is unstructured. Agents can actually bring good structure to it. Yes, they'll make some mistakes, but largely not worse than human beings in most cases. IT help desk ticketing, auto classifying, prioritizing and resolving common tech issues. So for any tech companies, AI agents have proven extremely beneficial because if you have a technology product, you know practically which are the top 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 user pain points. You can easily build AI agents around them. And 90% of your problems can be taken care of by those agents. Appointment scheduling. This is an absolutely low-hanging fruit. You should have an AI agent for that. Invoice processing. For all non-complicated and non-edge cases, invoice processing using AI agent is an absolutely perfected use case. Even if your company is small, this can still bring a lot of removal of headache and your finance people can then focus on more value-added things. And invoice processing actually works, automating the capture, matching and approval workflows. And you can also further integrate it to higher value added stuff, depending on how long your work process is. Enjoying the session? Make sure that you subscribe to my channel, Billion Hopes, that you watch our beautiful websites every day, Insights, Billion Hopes and Academy.
There is a lot of learning content there. And that you check out our lovely upskilling courses on AI on the Academy website. All the links are in the comments. Then we come to Employee Onboarding Assist. AI agents can do a lot of this. Normally, an HR person will be the key person, the anchor person. But for the initial two, three, four, five days of process orientation, AI agents can design a complete workflow around it. So without any major hitch, it can go very smoothly. Social media monitoring. Nowadays, the kind of sentiment analysis which a company's social media post would generate has become pretty crucial, very important. And social media monitoring, tracking the brand mentions, sentiment analysis, engaging with posts. You will be surprised to know that a lot of human sounding reactions from companies are actually automated. Now that's sad. That's really sad. But what to do? This is how it is. And that's why people say that maybe five years from now, You'll only have AI generating content, AI consuming content and using that consume content to generate even more content and the whole internet will be AI slop. I, I view it a bit differently. I agree that a lot of internet would be AI slop. It already has started turning into that. And I also feel at the same time that real human beings, their value will rise disproportionately. So I think both the things need to be seen together. Content generation, crafting standard emails, reports, and product descriptions. A lot of agentic AI is now, AI agents and agentic AI are different. Agentic AI is a collection of a whole set of agents that leads to a system. A lot of content generation, at least at the basic level, is happening with AI agents. And the pace at which it happens is actually quite high. So that is why it's said that a human being must monitor it because the quality of that can collapse. In my other playlist, I've been talking about some technical issues. I answer many of you are non-technical, but it helps to understand some fundamental technical things like model drift, model collapse. I just did a video yesterday. Maybe you should check out the other playlist and see these. It'll really help you. Why I brought up that particular video's reference here, content generation supervision, if you're not doing on a regular basis, you may find that the models you're using, the AI agents you're using are drifting from their original purpose and generating gibberish. That can be tackled if you have a day-to-day -day monitoring. Lead qualification, scoring and filtering all the leads based on predefined criteria and then escalating it to the right level of management and compliance checks. So many compliance checks need to be done in corporations, scanning of document, processing for regulatory adherence. A lot of that you can simply automate using AI agents. So AI agents are for low-hanging fruits, they are for complicated processes, but at least make a start with the low-hanging fruits. I can help you do that if you're interested, get in touch with us. Our people are always there to talk to you and help you understand. And you can check out wonderful courses on our academy. You can get started learning these things immediately. Enroll and get started. That's it. That's all it takes. And make sure that you subscribe to the newsletter Tuesday and Friday. You get all the wisdom right in your mailbox. So that's about AI agents in enterprises. This is Sandeep Anandhanem and Todd Sandy bringing you AI for real impact. I wish you great success trying out AI pilots in your company and do it with a lot of planning because if you plan well initially, then the probability of success in AI is very high. Wish you all the best. See you soon. Thank you.